Welcome to the Young Crones Cafe, where you can get a magic brew full of all sorts of information, both witchy and practical. Grab a cup of coffee and join us. I'm Elizabeth, a wordsmith. And I'm Dave, a modern-day sage. We are going to talk about various witchcraft and life topics from a slightly more mature perspective, at least most of the time. Thanks for joining us. On the path, which is the name for our personal witchcraft practices, we have spent a great deal of time discussing what we believe and why. These conversations led to the writing of a book full of information about our tradition. We call these beliefs metaphysical kernels of thought because they are the start of much, much bigger ideas. We thought we would share some of these with you. So, today's metaphysical kernel of thought is balance. As witches and seekers, those of us on the path strive to strike a state of balance in all areas of our lives. We do this even though we know this is what we call an aspirational goal. There is no way to achieve a state of perfect equilibrium because we are human beings who interact with the two worlds of the magical and the mundane at the same time. We call the space between and the process of moving back and forth between these worlds walking the hedge. Sometimes this space feels like it is walking a tightrope, and at other times it is broad and easy to navigate. We believe this is because there are times when we are in balance in some areas of our lives while others are wildly out of balance at the same time. Our goal nowadays is to move more towards that center point of balance in different areas of our lives sooner rather than getting stuck somewhere in extremes. If you picture a pendulum swinging back and forth in wide arcs, eventually its arcs get smaller and smaller until it settles somewhere more in the middle. We continue to work on learning to recognize when we are getting out of balance before it gets to an extreme if possible. To keep with the pendulum analogy, Different areas of our lives relate to multiple pendulums, which are all swinging at the same time. If we can keep them swinging in smaller, steady arcs, we are better in balance. Becoming aware sooner when an area of life is moving rapidly out of balance allows us to take action on either the magical or mundane side of things, or both, to alleviate this condition so that it doesn't throw more areas of our lives out of balance. Today, we're going to focus on yet another basic concept, I guess, that we base our practices on. A big one which you will find running throughout everything we talk about is that of balance. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, my, mine is around here somewhere, but I don't seem to be able to find it right at this particular moment. Oh, that's okay. We all have times like that. <laughs> and they, you know, momentary and other times we don't recognize how wildly out of balance we are until we fall on our ass somewhere. But for us, balance, as, as it says in the writing, is an aspirational goal. Because sure, something to which we strive and and yearn for, absolutely. And never actually completely accomplish. Well, and we were we were sort of talking about that last week with you know having one foot on one side of the hedge and one foot on the other, and trying to maintain that state of being able to, with each breath, acknowledge both our magical selves and our mundane selves. And that right there is uh, just another form of balance. Sure. Sure it is. And the, and the big piece of it is we all have different parts and different responsibilities and different things we're interested in life pieces for want of a better word. And we can be managing something really well and be in wonderful balance on one side and then other places we are so out of balance that it's laughable. Because <laughs> if you don't laugh, you're going to beat yourself over the head with a stick. You know? Well, so. well, and, and I just, I, I feel compelled to point out simply because it's been a recent part of my life experience is that we, um, we get used to in the mundane world, we have sort of functional expectations of the pieces of our world. And and the reason I say that is we kind of have a pretty good basic understanding that when we turn the wheel to the left, the tires will move to the left and the vehicle will move to the left. So we sort of operate in that mundane, making some pretty bold assumptions. 
and what has happened for me recently with some of the uh, the different spiritual issues and emotional issues that I've contended with is that my own emotional and visceral responses went through or are in a period where they're not predictable. One one time on one particular day, I can have a, a, a particular experience and I react a certain way and I accept that that's how I reacted and I understand that. And then the next day, the exact same circumstance can happen and my physical response is completely different than the last time I turned that wheel. And that is when I... You know, we talk about balance being a tightrope, or sometimes it's a very, very, very skinny road, or sometimes it's a very broad road. Well, in the case where I was, it was a desert. I couldn't tell where there was road because from day to day and some days moment to moment, I was not able to accurately predict how I was going to respond to different things. Taking that out of an emotional context and more to a a magical context, that's how it is sometimes when we are trying to do magic, but from a place where we are out of balance, is that, you know, we'll, we'll cast or we'll set an intention to have that wheel turn to the left. And the hood opens or some silly other thing happens because what we expected our magical response to be did not translate to that on the other end of the arrow in the mundane. So I I think sometimes balance for me is being able to see far enough ahead of time to realize, hey, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle this. And have that be the same way with my magic where I'm not or I'm I'm not comfortable casting until I am very certain that I have this right. And if it and if it takes me some extra time to write a spell, so be it. But I want to know that my intention is going to be what I'm trying to predict. And that to me is being able to work magic from a place of balance. Oh, I agree. And I think another big part of balance is it's easy, not, well, not easy, but you cannot see sometimes where you're veering off course, for want of a better word, in a particular area of your life. You think everything's fine to keep the car in your <laughs> Your wheel's going great and your tire's flat and you don't know it. So sometimes we get wildly out of balance in an area of our life and then it suddenly smacks us in the head because we can't go any farther with the flat tire. And then we recognize. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm reminded of Yosemite Sam. Yeah. My biscuits are burning. <laughs> it's the same idea. Sometimes we get to that spot of being out of balance and until we're in the middle of the shit, we don't make that correction. And for us on the path, the biggest part about that aspirational goal is recognize when we're with the lemmings heading for the cliff sooner. So we're not, to keep it in cartoon, mode, we're not like yourself, you're not like the, the coyote who runs off the cliff, he's there in midair, and then he suddenly realizes, oh shit, I'm off in air, and down he goes. So we're trying right. to avoid some of those where we maybe stop. Well, if you... If you go back to the if you go back to the pendulum analogy that was in you know in the reading, yeah, um, you go back to that and and being able to see earlier and earlier that the swings are getting bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a there's actually kind of a nautical way of looking at that. Um, you look at some uh, what I consider to be old sailors, and by that I mean someone like like my uncle who I know has spent thirty or forty years and many seasons operating a, a, a sailboat and hand on the tiller and doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. And a, a, a sharp sailor knows to make the adjustment in the wheel right before the wind is going to do that thing that only he can see that the wind is going to do ahead of time. And when his boat is perfectly balanced, he can look at that and predict the way that the boat is going to move. 
as soon as he becomes reactive, where you get a little bit off course and you have to make a correction, the larger the correction you make, the more where things tend to go back and forth and oscillate. Mm -hmm. So he is really trying to be just moments ahead with his corrections to always keep things nicely balanced. You have a nice smooth ride. You make you make good way. Yeah, and that's, that is a wonderful way to describe it. Because if you can recognize that stuff sooner, like you said, you can make that correction sooner. And sometimes you're going to miss, and I have sailed and watched that happen, and all of a sudden your sails are flapping in the wind, and they're yelling at you to do that. Move the mast! And, and every, everyone needs to lean off the left side now. <laughs> yeah. Right, lean over the left, you know, kind of thing. Which, you know, but, but, that, but learning how to do that stuff sooner, or even recognizing it sooner, because sometimes no matter what you do, you're not sure. going to be able to correct it right away, but recognizing, okay, I'm way out of balance over here, but I'm not beating myself up for it either. Because right. I'm way in balance over here, and that allows me to recognize, okay, I'm doing okay. I don't have to pay attention to this part, and I can focus on this part over here, at least for a little while to try and even it out again. And taking well, and that's that's one of the things that, that I have to mention. Meditation has uh, made such a difference for me in that there are moments that I plan in my day where I'm thinking about none of those things. Yeah. And just listening and breathing and giving myself a minute to connect with my, my imminent spark. Um, just, you know, some people call it my little baby boy or whatever, but yeah. Just a couple of breaths to be able to connect and, and, and know that my my spark is okay. And then back to the mundane or magical either way. Mm -hmm. As needed. And sometimes we learn to recognize sooner. Sometimes you need to make adjustments on the mundane. Sometimes it's on the magical. Sometimes it's both. And learning which is going to be more effective in a given area of your life, for instance, can be helpful too. And that's part of learning to balance a little better. Well, and I think just with this this recent stuff that I've experienced, it's helped me see that there is some delay or some lag in, because I've been trying to use magic to help my mundane, and I'm, I'm kind of getting a feel for there's a little bit of a lag or a delay that, you know, I want it. Now, this moment, I'm done casting. Why isn't it here yet? <laughs> okay. um, and there there again, if I'm acting with that kind of urgency that tells me how far out of balance or how far that pendulum has swung or, you know, how far on the end of the teeter-totter I am. I can't, well, that's that's very, I mean, we want what we want, what we want, and we want it right now. And we sound like, right. you know, to be honest, you know. And we all have those moments. And that's, like you said, sometimes the universe will respond when it chooses to. It's not like you have a pipeline to the external divine where your requests go to the front of the queue, as it were. <laughs> well, what I've been getting from my universal voice is when I put in a request, they'll look at the true urgency of it establish it as they see fit yeah. and basically their answer to me is yeah we'll we'll slide that down when it fits yeah exactly and i'm learning to accept yeah. okay that was the edge of a pendulum swing and i am going back towards balance from here simply by making that notice yes and that's becoming act actively balancing which I'm, I'm sure at some level, actively balancing is probably an oxymoron, but I think it sort of fits here because that's really sort of what we are doing is trying to, to move that wheel just a little bit to the left or to the right before that wind happens in our spiritual lives. Okay. All I could think of for a minute when you said actively balancing, it's not an oxymoron because you've ever seen somebody walk a tightrope? They are actively balancing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and they are usually operating a bit ahead of the physics of where their center of mass is because they've learned to do that. 
Exactly. And I think that's part of it. And, and I mean, I, I don't want, and the other piece is we don't want to spend our lives walking a tightrope all the time. It's exhausting. Well, no, I'm the I'm the I'm the guy with the little umbrella. <laughs> but, you know, I'm eight feet off the cliff because I want to go live it. I mean, it's it's kind of my nature. Yeah, I know, but that's okay too. But by the same token, I have learned that I don't have to live a life of extremes by working on recognizing. Okay, I don't have to be elated or furious. I can be content in the middle and things are going to make me a little more towards the happier side of things and things are going to piss me off a little bit. But if I'm furious, then I'm creating chaos. One day I will feel what I can intellectually hear you describing. I'm just not there yet. (laughs) I'm learning. I'm not saying I am all the time either. I mean that that's part of it. There are things Well, that- yeah, okay, I have to I have to say I have been noticing it more often and noticing it more often has given the result that it has happened more often. Well, sometimes too we have to work through that stuff. Cuz if you have to understand too that if we have lived a pattern of extremes for a very long time and coming <clears throat> to practicing witchcraft, I think a lot of us get here because we have extremes of something in our lives that we're not managing well, and this is the best fit. And we settle in and we discover, okay, there's a community of people who think like I do, and that takes some of the stress away. And they won't get all hung up on the little details so I can make it mine. Yeah, and I can practice magic to make changes in myself and my world around me that I live in to make managing the mundane a little easier. Not perfect, but easy. And it's, and it's not coming from a book written by some dude. No, or, yeah, or somebody else, or inspired by Yahweh or, you know, whoever. You know, it's it's not somebody telling me what to do. It This practice gives me the opportunity to figure it out for myself, which means when I find the solution that works for me, it's going to work. Well, yeah. In fact, it's it's one of the few faith groups that actively encourages individuality. Yeah, this is it. And knowing that I can find better ways to manage my mundane life, I am able to dial back from the edge just a little bit faster some days. In some areas. And other areas that used to be way out of balance tend to be more more stable than they used to be because of what I do, what I believe and how I think. And it, it's, a, it's an interesting process because I can be wandering along in a certain area of my life that I think is smooth as glass. If you take the water analogy, no wind, nice smooth surface, and I step on it and I go six feet under, you know, because it wasn't as in balance as I thought it was. And then other areas where I have really struggled with extremes are suddenly heading towards center. And I didn't do anything, I don't think. But the universe has decided, okay, she's working on this. So this reflects back and makes this less extreme for her. Is what I'm finding the longer I do this. Hmm. But that's my experience of it. Sure. You know, and I am more likely to let other people go through their process and not get upset by their moods or think I have to fix it. Well, yeah, one of the, just as a side note, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned recently is, you know, the, the, the sayings that I saw, I will paraphrase it and butcher it, but Mm -hmm. it inspired me because it said the easiest way to reduce your stress is to stop having such strong opinions about everything. Dave, Um, And so recently that has been very, very present in front of mind for me. And uh, it it has helped me find some perspective. And once I have the perspective, then I know where I'm in balance and where I'm not and where I need to put energy to get myself closer to balance. Exactly. For me, it's reminding myself consistently. And that's the hard part is I am not. I have no control 
over other people, other places, and other things. The only thing I can control is how I interact or react to it. <laughs> That's it, in a nutshell. You know, and when I can do that, and it's not selfish, I'm keeping the focus on me at that point and my spiritual growth and what I want my life to be. And I'm not, inter I'm not worried about what everybody else is up to. Sure. Sure. I actually have, um, you know, I get some folks that'll come in and they, they want to talk to me about a spell that does something to someone else. Yes. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing to me personally, the way I believe, whether it's a good intention or a positive intention, I always try to discourage people from doing something to someone. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like someone being around, then do magic to help you become stronger or more resilient when that person is around, as opposed to trying to banish them and sort of focus as much of the magical intention you can on yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is just so completely opposite from the way that uh, the greater part of my life was lived. And so <laughs> I forget and I slide back into that other guy. Um, and recently for me, the, it's all been about being present. So, you know, as soon as I realize that I'm in a place that's not where my feet and my belly button are, I'm like, okay, no, 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 I'm here now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been making a difference as far as keeping my own balance. Yeah. When you're in the present, you're not hung up by what was. Or what might be. Or terrified of what might be, yep. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're here. All you got is now anyway. When you come well, right and, to it. And when 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 I stop for a minute and actually notice here, I actually kind of like here. Yeah, most of the time. And if I don't, I yeah. go somewhere else. Right. You know, you have the right to do that, too. And, and you're right about the spells for other people. I, You know, people always want love spells, make someone love me because everybody wants to be part of whatever. But I always try to, when people do that, I've always said to people, how about if you work on a spell that makes you attractive or makes you feel that you love yourself? That, help, that helps you attract the right sort of person. Absolutely. Yep. And do that, do Ma it that way. Because I, I think the magic, I think the magic is in us as individuals and so it's the best place to have the magic directed I think um, so. but there again that's that's kind of me not necessarily the path but i don't see that there's any difference there no i think that that's the path's focus anyway is your personal spiritual growth and development and we work a lot of magic for our on ourselves you know make us you know i was of this or notice this or take a look at this that you know, give me the strength to look at this area over here in my life that I'm trying to ignore. Sure. Yeah. Sure. As, as opposed to somebody well, else. Well, that was the last ritual that you and I did together was really around help me see those places that I don't see that I'm out of balance in. Mm hmm You know, and that's, boy, it's been making a difference for me, so. Yeah, that, 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 those equinoxes are very powerful because it's the universe reminding us that balance is important. Otherwise, there wouldn't be two days that are kind of the same, the light and dark are equal, if you want to get that well, about it. But it doesn't stay. That's the piece, too. The universe is, well, we're never going to stay in this perfect balance thing. We're on constantly moving and changing. This is going to sound really corny, but my mantra for the last week and it's straight from Susie and I used to have one of our favorite movies, the fifth element mm -hmm. But my mantra has been fire burns, wind blows, earth turns, you know, I, yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. It, it, it instantly takes me to a place where I realize that, I am just here on this spinning ball in this cosmos, and uh, it gets me out of the universe being me. Which makes perfect sense, actually. 
I mean, when you think about it, change happens constantly. It's our resistance yep. to it that causes our problems with it. Yeah, yeah. Susie used to say, ride that, that perfect wave of creation with each moment. Yeah, pretty much. That's part of the, the joy that you get from, I think that's the biggest gift from the external divine, is learning to step out onto that edge of creation and not worrying about that you're going to fall off. Because you are. Yeah. Enjoy the ride while you got it for now. Yeah, get- yeah, I've All I've right. had moments that way um, musically where I've just sure played pl- played beyond myself and enjoyed the playing of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then it ends, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen again either. Oh no, all things in balance. Oh yes, yeah, and, and and I don't think unless you are the external divine of the universe that you can constantly ride that way because we're human. The money. Well, yeah, and, and and there's other people trying to ride their own wave, and oh, yeah. sometimes math happens. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, so balance, like I said, is a goal. Goals are great. Working towards goals is something I think that witches do best sometimes. We just have to recognize that goals are not always attainable, but that doesn't mean we should get rid of them either. Well, I think at least my myself coming from the shamanic background through pagan and whatnot, um, my understanding of myself as an animal living in this natural world mm-hmm. has become more in balance since I started following things like the path and some of the the natural traditions, so to speak. Well, I appreciate knowing that. You know, that that's always been one of our goals is to allow people to become more present in their lives, more positive about what they're doing, not feeling so wildly out of control because human beings, let's be honest, value control and recognizing though, that it's okay not to be. You nailed it exactly. And, and I would say to that, that, after the, the, the period of the last few days, I am feeling sage again, and I'm, I'm proud to be able to say that. Yeah, and sometimes, it, it, but you're a different sage because you recognize that I don't have to be some perfect version in my head that I created of what sage is supposed to be. Well, I am. In this moment right now, I am wonderfully in balance in my spiritual oh sure okay and and that's okay you know there's going to be times when it's like that and but we also have to recognize that there's going to also be corresponding times when it's not and when we get back to it we understand it a little better and cherish it and try and figure out ways to get back there sooner next time My balance is all about just staying in now. Yeah. And sometimes that works better than others. <laughs> you know, this, this is the, the best part about working towards balance is I, sometimes... I think you're missing my point. No, I do. I get it. Now is pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm getting away from that, you know, sometimes or getting... You know, trying to recreate moments and just being being more present, being more about now, at least recently for me, has been a very calming and soothing thing. And I relish it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And that sounds like a good spot to stop. Well, I wish you very well. Same to you. Be- be safe, be blessed, and be loved, everybody. Yes, and I was I was always say, may you find mercy and reverence in all things. In all things, yep. Witch stones are a divination tool we created as part of our practice that deals with what we call concrete stones, specific types and times of energy, and conceptual stones, things and ideas about witchcraft which can be read with either a seen or an unseen meaning. Recently, we have developed a set of oracle cards using this information. We would like to introduce you to one of these stones right now. 
in today's Witchstone Spotlight, we'll be looking at the stone card for the X. Concept stone cards focus on an aspect of the craft rather than on a specific physical energy. The X is the eighth of eight mental concept stone cards of the Witchstone Oracle deck that relate to the energy of thoughts or processes. It displays a pictograph of a simple black X surrounded by a white and black border. The border being split white over black tells us that this is a concept stone card. And the border being white over black or air over earth tells us that this card represents a mental concept. An X can have many meanings. It was used in the past as a symbol of a person's oath. Before humanity became more educated, many signed their names with an X. It is also known as a variable of the unknown in mathematics. It is seen as a shorthand way to draw a skull and crossbones, the symbol of death and endings. But it also symbolizes the sun and stars, which can be thought of as the beginning of a transformation. For those of us on the path, it can symbolize a crossroads, a place where witches meet, or the center of our sacred space where the directions meet and form above and below. Because the X means either being in the right spot or movement being delayed in some way, its energy is neither projective nor receptive, but neutral. It can be considered a point out of time similar to what you may experience when working magic. Time has no meanings between the worlds, so the energy is associated with both the light and the dark halves of the year. The X is associated with both the dark new and the full moon cycles. The X represents thoughts and ideas when reflecting on the element of air. And the X represents personal development when reflecting on the element of earth. The scene energy for the X stone card in a reading is delay, not now, and the right spot. Delay may mean needing to wait for something we desire because things have to fall into place first. Not now may mean the answer from the universe when you ask for something and it is important to deal with the, these feelings of frustration. The right spot may mean you are exactly where you need to be right now on your personal path or in some part of your mundane life. Think of the phrase, X marks the spot. The unseen energy for the X stone card in a reading is delay, feeling stuck, and missing the mark. Delay may mean taking a look around to see if there are things we can do to change what is causing this to happen. Feeling stuck may mean we need to make some changes to keep moving forward on our path at this time. And missing the mark may mean that something you are trying isn't working and you need to refocus your intention or perhaps even change your target. Before we go, we would like to present you with a tip or trick or witchy hint. Just something to make your day go better because we live in a mixture of the magical and the mundane. Today's tip, trick, or witchy hint is all about written sigils and maybe some places to keep them. Now, a couple of episodes ago, Dave, our sage and tip trick or witchy hint, talked about using air sigils, where you can literally draw your symbol in the air for various magical activities. But this one is going to focus a bit more on the written down kind. Now, basically, a sigil is a combination of one of two things, various symbols that speak magically to you as a spell, or... You can literally write out your intent and combine the letters into some sort of pattern while focusing on what you're doing. This is a way to create a spell and to do magic using sigils. Now, 
one thing that people do when they are writing a sigil in that way is to write it out and then you cross out all the duplicate letters and then figure out a nice little drawing that you can create for yourself by placing the letters one on top of each other in various combinations. And once you have it down the way you like it, it require, may require several sheets of paper, um, you then write it out while focusing on your intent, and this creates the spell. Now, the idea is you want to keep this intent near you until your magic manifests. However, this is also a great way to actually hide what we do call hiding magic in plain sight, because other people really won't notice or care what you have around you that is actually magical. Some great places to keep sigils are inside your phone case. We tend to stick an extra 20 in there or a bank card or something similar. Why not a sigil? How about on a water bottle label? We all tend to carry those bottles of water around to various places, so you could put one on there. Just draw it on and nobody will notice. On various packages in your kitchen if you are using it for some sort of home magic. This is a great place to put sigils, and as you use up the item, you can be aware that the magic is coming into being. On a key ring, draw one out, stick it on your key ring, nobody will notice. In your wallet, everybody carries around a wallet nowadays, or most people do. Stick one in the coin compartment, behind the credit card, wherever you want somewhere where you'll see it and remember it. People have been known to write them on gum wrappers. And this is one of my personal favorites. You can draw one on the back of a watch. When you're done, just wipe it off with an alcohol wipe and start over again. You can use it for multiple sigils in that way. The idea is to create the sigil using your intent for a spell. Now put it somewhere where you can keep track of it. And the easiest way to keep track of it is by putting it somewhere, as you can see by the suggestive list, of where you will find it, see it, and remember what you're doing magically later. Well, it looks like the coffee cups are empty for this week. We hope you join us again next Tuesday. But you can find us at our website, twoyoungcrones.com. That's the number two young crones. You can also find us on social media such as Facebook and Twitter. Until then, Until then remember, remember, we are witches who work with energies to affect change. We are believers in both imminent and transcendent divine. We are celebrants of the passage of the solar and lunar cycles. We are hedge walkers who pass back and forth between the worlds of the magical and the mundane. We are seekers of knowledge. We are walkers of a spiritual tradition we call the path. So, so will it be. Do.